Hello. Uh, very nice to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so Imran gave us a little bit of information in that intro, but I just wanted to start, Natasha, from your point of view, you know, explain to us what is a digital ID and why would a brand want one on its clothing? Well, today brands, um, their digital and physical world are entirely disconnected. And you have brands selling physical products and you have all these digital initiatives and none of them are connected. And so the moment that a brand sells a product, they lose the connection to the customer. They lose the ability to monetize their products. They lose all data. And historically, brands have ID products from point of production to point of sale. Right? We know every product has a barcode or an RFID tag. And that's what makes commerce possible today. And all of that is removed the moment the product's sold, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, so with digital ID, we're just embedding that intelligence in the product for its life cycle such that it can be connected end to end. So what is the actual link here? How do you mm. actually link a physical good to a digital identity? Yeah. So Eon as a platform, we are hardware agnostic. So we enable brands to connect their physical products via NFC, RFID, QR code, digital fingerprint, right? You can have any physical thing within the product to connect it. And then what we do is we basically make that digital twin of that physical product in the cloud, and we provide that gateway. And so once that digital twin is in the cloud, we enable that product to basically connect to all of the ecosystem of opportunities through the Eon platform. So connect to the customer, connect to the resale partner, and really enable brands to sort of have this, this infinite possibility of each asset. And uh, who are some of Eon's partners in the fashion industry? Imran mentioned a couple, yeah. but I know you've been working on building out that network. Yeah, I think it's, it's a really exciting time for product ID because we're seeing this shift from sort of small scale to portfolio wide. So brands are, you know, the value of the ID is in the ubiquity, right? If you think the barcode, every single product has it. And that's where brands are moving with product ID. Every single physical product will be identified. Um, and we work with clients and partners like H&M, Target, Gabriella Hurst, Zalando. Um, I'm forgetting many. My team is in the crowd. Um, and we've also recently stewarded a commitment among leading luxury brands like Burberry, Stella McCartney, Chloe to digitize all products by 2025. Okay. So it's happening. So, uh, Natalie, um, your firm, Imaginary Ventures, has invested in Eon. Uh, we've spoken before. Uh, you described Eon's work to me once as, as laying the railroads at the start of the Industrial Revolution, which I thought was a, a fascinating metaphor. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so in the Industrial Revolution, the, the output was um, through, through railroads, were cities, uh, centers of commerce, uh, high streets, um, all connected by the tracks of the railroad. Um, the, the exciting part of it was, of course, the metropolis and the commerce that derived from it. Um, but at the very beginning was the laying of the tracks. And um, when we met with Natasha, we, we were always very forward thinking and thinking about where the consumer is going to go and how they're going to transact. And of course, thinking about everything that we're talking about these days in Web3 and um, whether it is deriving royalties for, from products um, that are sold or uh, maintaining the connectivity between uh, the brand and the consumer, regardless of the journey having gone through wholesale to peer to peer. Um, and so when we were thinking about the future and we met uh, Natasha and the team at Eon, um, it was clear that this was the fundamental, the first thing that needed to happen was that brands needed to give their products that they are manufacturing. And of course, we're talking about fashion today, but this is all products. Brands need to give their products that they are manufacturing a digital ID at the single item level. So what this means is that my frame pants, my personal pair have a single ID. And if Natasha has the exact same pair of pants, it has a different ID. And imagine if you can track this pair of pants in, right all the way into my closet, perhaps I sell it, a, a pair of pants to Natasha. Frame has no way of knowing that uh, Natasha is her customer, um, but if they can connect back to the ID that connects 
to Natasha, they all of a sudden have a connection to her. Um, I'm giving one example, but the, the, the applications that will be possible through having a digital, a single digital ID to every product, which in essence, to use the buzzword of the decade, is an NFT, is a one of one, um, means that the entire world of uh, possibilities becomes uh, open in perpetuity with this, this, uh, this ID, which is why we invested in it. <laughs> so we've, we've spoken a lot here today about the digital world. Um, you know, fashion companies, they're paying a lot of attention to that. They still make the vast majority of their sales from physical goods. So it mm -hmm. sounds like you see this as kind of, this is a gateway linking, linking those two worlds in a sense. And you know, why, why does that matter? Why is that such an important concept? Well, I think um, we are definitely talking first about physical goods. Um, but uh, if you think about all the functionalities of uh, the frictionless functionalities that are enabled from digital to digital, payments, uh, transfer of information, transfer of data, transfer of imagery, all of these things are happening frictionlessly. And um, but a product exists in the physical world. Um, to be able to benefit from those uh, technologies, you, you do have to link them. There's no other way. Um, and the way that I like to think about it, and I know we talk a lot about um, community and um, content, and but what we're talking about here really is commerce. So if you think about in the old days, way back when, when people were buying and selling things, you had the, the product, the seller, the buyer, the cash in a room. And there was an exchange of goods and cash. Then uh, Web1 came along and um, the internet facilitated the ability to sell that product as a picture. And if you, I mean, I was there and people said, I will never buy books without touching my book. I will never buy, never let anyone else pick out my own bananas. And certainly they said to me many times, I'll never buy clothing without touching it. So here we are in 2022, people are buying a lot of things without touching them. They're buying from that picture. Then the technology of Web2 came along and allowed um, retailers and marketplaces to connect to that picture, even if though they didn't have the inventory, and connected all the disparate inventory that was available in boutiques and brand stores, all from that particular image. Now today, what we're talking about is taking that image, which is in the cloud, and connecting it back to a product, but that product may be in your closet, it may be in the brand store, it may be on a website, a multi-brand retailer, um, and you all of a sudden can connect the entire ecosystem via that product to each other and back and forth. So I think this is a, a very fascinating concept. One big challenge that even the most fascinating concepts can face is customer adoption. Mm. Um, you know, People aren't always eager to adopt new behaviors. We've seen this time and again in various ways. Why do you think people will actually use these digital IDs? Yeah, I think, first of all, we're seeing them used. Um, we see one in three customers engaging with their products. Um, and what's really exciting is these products have, as a brand, right, you know your products have so much to say. There's so much that goes into the making of each product, the story, and the life cycle of that asset, yet all of that information is lost, right? We, we today just have a little hang tag that gets removed. And so we see a lot of engagement, and there's a lot of interest from customers in their products. Um, there's also the ability for the brands to start to give customers access to all these Web3 initiatives, whether it's connecting the products to the metaverse and NFT, um, these new digital worlds that they're creating through the physical product. Um, and then also just the value, the financial value to the customer. Right, we can now enable brand customers to seamlessly resell their products, right? Reducing all of the friction associated with resale, um, which just makes it that much easier to have flexibility within your wardrobe. And so the customer can scan that product and instantly resell back through the original brand or through the preferred br brand's partners. And so that's enabling brands to really create this ecosystem of controlled assets where they are continuously generating the revenue from their products and the customer benefits from all of those services. It's like, it's like moving from this very transactional relationship that brands have with customers into this service-based continuous relationship between brands and customers actually enabled through the physical product. 
One of the ideas that I find um, particularly interesting is the idea of this being able to enable royalties on mm -hmm. subsequent sales. Because, <clears throat> you know, the way it currently works, a brand sells a product, that's yeah. their, their, the end of their connection to it. Right. Um, they don't benefit from the full life cycle. With this, in theory, you could. I mean, is, is that right? Like, how would that work? Yeah, we see brands being able to as much as double the profit per product through digital ID. Right? The ID actually becomes a source of revenue. Customers can scan and style right? a recommendation on an outfit. Customers can scan and reorder. We're doing a lot of that for intimates. Right? Things that you have in your closet that you would want again. So it's really enabling. Brands today capture a fraction of the possible revenue that they could from each asset. Um, and this is unlocking that possibility. And, in, and what we imagine will happen is that um, brands will create smart contracts um, where they will uh, you know, attach, uh, acknowledge the, their IP connected back to the product through the cloud, to back to Eon. Um, and when that transaction is happening, uh, whether it's in store or digitally, when the credit card um, gets uh, used, the smart contract will be triggered and a royalty will be put out in perpetuity to the brands forever and ever. Um, but you could imagine even royalties being shared with influencers. Um, so that uh, if uh, you see a product on a person, their, their um, role in that transaction could be recorded in a smart contract and they could get a uh, royalty in perpetuity. I think, listen, brands, the fashion industry is an industry built around making beautiful product. Um, it's not a tech industry. There are a lot of people in the tech industry and I think we, the tech industry tends to put a lot of fear into companies that don't do technology. And I think it's fair to say brands make beautiful product, technology people make great technology. Um, when um, I think today brands have learned that they sit on the sidelines and they ignore technological tools that allow them to increase revenue, connect with consumers, uh, scale their businesses, grow communities. They don't want to ignore anything anymore. Um, they understand that uh, it's, you know, on a very simple level, they've gone from adopting Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, iOS, Android. You know, every day you have to have a new uh, platform that you adopt. And leaders of companies now know that if something new comes along that can enable them to do something new in an entire evolving ecosystem. And I think we've, um, it's clear that this is still day one of Web3 capabilities, but um, the brands know that they have to uh, adopt things a lot faster than they did in 1999. Mm -hmm. and, um, and certainly the minute that they, they see uh, the connectivity, um, the ability to recoup uh, royalties, to be right sitting there right alongside a customer who's reselling their handbag to somebody else that they've never met and it's not even happening in their store, the minute they realize they can do that, they're all going to have these uh, digital IDs. And, and I would say that the sooner they do that, the better. It's a little bit like not having metadata attached to any of your content that can no longer be found by Google. If you, are, if you can't be searched or traced, um, then do you exist? Um, and I think the question is, of course, you've got a physical brand that exists, but if only the people who are in physical contact with you can see it, it's very limiting. And just to be clear, we I mean, you've talked about NFTs and smart contracts. Uh, Eon is not specifically a blockchain based platform. Is that right? Yeah, that's a really great question. So I'll talk a little bit about how the ID gets made and then how it can connect to the blockchain. So basically brands today have a lot of product data that sits within an existing system. So we link into that product data, right? And then we generate that profile for the product and then we serialize it. So we make, if you're making 5 million of that sweater, we'll make 5 million unique IDs, right? So each one is like a snowflake, right? And then that's the digital ID, right? That's the center profile of your product. That's your digital twin, right? And then that digital twin, as it goes through its life cycle, has a record of events, right? It was in this factory, it was through distribution, it was in retail, it was sold, it was resold, right? All of those are what we call events associated with the life cycle. Now, Eon can put those events on whatever brand's preferred blockchain, whether it's Aura or Ariani, right? There are very, various different blockchain initiatives, but we are really the home to the product ID, and then various events can be recorded on preferred blockchains. And then 
also, if I'm not mistaken, um, Eon isn't really interested in telling brands how to use these ideas, mm -hmm. right? You're kind of providing the the capability and leaving it up to them to, yeah. you know, to come up with the, the utility and to fill in the information yeah. as well. Is that right? So we help because in a new space, brands need gu guidance on this, but we are seeing a lot of, like there's so many different ways to take it based on the brand type. So some of the brands are leaning into sustainability stories. Some are leaning into resale or you know reuse or instant reorder. And um, some are leaning into the Web3 application. So it's really exciting to see, um, but basically through one physical gateway in the product, they can give the customers access to all of those. So we see a lot of use of like a navigation functionality so that the user can pick, like choose your own adventure of exactly what function you want from the product. I think Eon's like the World Wide Web, and it's the World Wide Web of products um, in the same way that um, when Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web, um, people were able to use it and build what they were going to build on it uh, themselves for um, for whichever purpose, um, Eon facilitates the World Wide Web of product and co connectivity. Um, but you know, because it is a physical product, um, instead of just downloading something, you do have to, at the, at the point of manufacture, uh, create that digital ID. How critical is it to build out a network of partners so mm. you know so that you can actually have companies um, that can carry out some of these functionalities you're talking yeah. about? What's kind of amazing is the ecosystem that's now being built on the Eon platform. So basically, when a brand creates their IDs, we're then connecting those IDs to their ecosystem of partners. You know, so a brand creates their IDs, we'll connect them to Vestia or ThreadUp or, Th or Trove, right? Brands can connect to multiple resale partners through Eon. And so basically, we're now seeing that digital ID is actually the first step to resale. Because through Eon, brands can now cr create uh, their revenue from these different channels. We've been using a very analog approach to resale today, which is a one-off partnership, like a brand will partner with one resale partner. But actually, that's not how the world works. We work in ecosystems, and products are all over the world, and customers are all over the world participating in different models. So Eon really unlocks that gateway for brands to access that revenue across all of these different channels through the ID. The, uh, the EU has a new set of policy proposals um, around sustainability that would make digital product passport standard. Um, did you put them up to this? I did. <laughs> <laughs> did. It, was, it was really great to find out about that after we made our investments, actually. Yeah. <laughs> how, I mean, how, how does this affect Eon's yeah. vision for the future? And are you seeing increased interest from brands as a result? You know, what are the effects? Yeah. I mean, Eon really, we have been an advocate for the role of digital ID in sustainable business model transformation since we began. Um, and digital ID is really the way to transition the business model of industry and also bring accountability. Now with this you know, EU directive, brands will have to have an item level ID. They will have to have on product transparency. They will have to have a channel for their products to go through resale. And that digital ID will also be leveraged for recycling. So it's, it's really exciting to see both the commercial value of the ID aligning into the sustainability and the policy to really hopefully create an entirely new sustainable model for fashion. You know, I just want to say that um, when I met Natasha, I was so blown away by her, by her vision and her focus on building something like this, which would is ultimately agnostic on both sides and is going to empower so many new businesses business opportunities. And I asked her how she got the idea to do this. And um, Natasha was an art student and obviously very creative and could imagine the future instead of pointing to it. And um, she started working uh, in envisioning uh, connected cities. And in thinking about connected cities, um, she started working her way back to what is the fundamental point at which uh, connection is possible. And that's where she envisioned Eon. And I really truly believe this is going to be, um, in the same way that Shopify has empowered so many people to create their own stores, and, uh, and Shopify has empowered entirely new industries and standalone uh, plug-in businesses, um, Eon is going to do the same thing. And it's not just going to be for commerce. All right. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for your time. Very much appreciate having you.